Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have six Easter DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I kind of went with a theme of all like blue and white gingham and all with a little touch of a coastal flair just by adding that blue color into all of them. So this is just a little sneak peek of all the DIYs we're gonna do today. And I can't wait to show you how I put them all together. So let's get started. The first one, I'm gonna make a very fluffy Easter bunny for my wall using these little mop heads from the Dollar Tree and some of this fuzzy wire and a tinsel egg and a tinsel bunny head from Dollar Tree. Okay, so to get started, we need to deconstruct. I'm gonna use the Easter egg for the body of my bunny. So this was like really easy to take apart. Basically, you just have to grab one end of the tinsel and unwind it on the little tabs on the side and easy peasy. We have a little cage that's gonna be my Easter bunny body. And then we're gonna do the same thing with a little bunny head. There's little paper ears. And this was on there a lot tighter than the Easter egg. So anytime you have any resistance when you're trying to strip one of these, um, just use your scissors and kind of cut up through it and you can get through it. The bunny head like kind of um, goes up and down. So it was on there a little bit tighter. So I'm just gonna cut them and then peel away all of the tinsel. I really am not a fan of the tinsel signs, but I love the little cages that they leave behind. They're perfect for crafting. So I always take these apart and make them better. So there's our cages. So let's get started. We're gonna use these little fluffy um, microfiber mop heads from the Dollar Tree. I think I use a total of five of them today. And I'm just gonna kind of do one at a time. Um, I am gonna go over to the edge so that I can have some scraps cause I might need some scraps for this. And I'm just gonna do a hot glue along the edges and some in the middle there of where that's gonna hit. And I'm just gonna like line that up on one side and glue that down to our egg cage. And then I'm just going to flip it over and trim it with some fabric scissors. You have to be a little bit careful when you're cutting this mop head because um, you wanna kinda cut along the back fabric so it doesn't fall apart too much. And I'm kinda trimming with a border around there so that you can't see the tabs or any of the plastic cage and it looks like a big fuzzy stuffed animal. And so let's go ahead and get started with mop head number two. This one pretty much covers the rest of the egg. There is a small part there left over. So same thing, I'm just gonna kinda go across on the cage and along the edges. I wanna make sure that I get the mop head on there before my hot glue dries. And it's when you're hot gluing something like this, it's really good to work on a silicone mat, which is what I'm working on. The hot glue does not stick to it at all. And I have a link to mine um, below. I love my silicone mat, nothing sticks to it. And again, just trimming up around the sides. Now the last piece of the egg or the bunny body is pretty small. So one of these scraps from earlier is gonna be perfect to cover that part. So we're just gonna glue that on there. This was such an easy DIY and it turned out like so good and it's such a big statement piece for my wall. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just string a piece of twine there on the top so that I'll be able to connect that to our bunny head before I glue up any opening there and then trimming off the rest of that. 
And we have the egg completely covered with this fluffy material. So let's get started on our little bunny head. Now again, this kind of goes up and down. Um, it's kind of like a textured face, but I'm only gonna worry about like the edges and the ones that go up. <laughs> I'm not gonna go down into like the little dips on the bunny head. And just gluing another one of those mop heads on. And then just like before, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim. Every time I put a piece on there, I just find it easier to do it that way. And be sure to save my scraps. Now you can see how it kind of falls apart there sometimes. If it does, just kind of pull on it a little bit and trim it. And then before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a simple hanger on the little existing um, circle there on the top just with some Dollar Tree twine. And this piece is gonna go like the top of the bunny head and like half of the ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on those parts. Kind of push that up together so you can't really see the seam there on the bunny face. And then trim the little ears and the face there. This one was a little bit more challenging to trim but still not too bad. I, I did another like bunny um, body that I did like the weaved um, rope from the Dollar Tree um, a couple weeks ago in one of my Easter DIY videos. And that one turned out a little bit bigger. I used the metal um, reform. So this is probably, oh man, I don't know, two feet where that one's three feet but they both turned out so cute. Okay, so let's work on our final part of our bunny head here. I'm just gonna take another one of those microfiber mop heads and cut it in half and glue one onto each of our ears. I'm gonna have this where it's gonna be the back of the bunny and so no like insets to the ears or anything like that. And I don't have to worry about doing a face or anything on the bunny either. So again, once I get that glued on there, that hot glue dries really quickly and we can just trim off our excess microfiber. I love these mop heads. I've made so many cool things with these. Um, I did a really cool winter um, life ring. It looked like a snowy life ring with this stuff. They're so fun to craft with. And they make great like gnome beards as well. So we have our bunny body and our bunny head all covered with this fluffy material. And I wanna make a bunny tail since this is the back. And I found this at the Dollar Tree in the toy department. It's like a fuzzy wire. And it's the color I want, so I'm just gonna try to ball it into a ball to make it look like a bunny tail. They also have like um, keychains um, that are big pom-pom like material like this at the Dollar Tree, but I wanted this exact color, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make my own with that. Super easy. And then we're just gonna glue that on our little bunny bottom. And we're not gonna do a lot of details. It's gonna be kind of abstract like that. Now we can put our um, body on our head by just tying this together to the bottom of the bunny head with that twine. And easy peasy, we have our hanger, we have it all together. Then I wanted to do like some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree in the same pretty color. And it really reminds me of the ocean. And I'm gonna tie that around the neck area of our new little bunny that we made. And double tie that, and that's gonna give me like um, the two tails for my bow. And it's gonna go around the neck. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dovetail that ribbon to make it look a little better. And then I'm gonna use another piece of that burlap ribbon to form the bow part. So I'm gonna cut a piece off, loop it around, and kind of overlap the back a little bit. Then I'm gonna use a zip tie from the Dollar Tree and go underneath my bow, make sure I've got all of that together and kind of pinch that in there 
like a bow and then zip tie that down. And that is all there is to that bow. Easy peasy. It turned out really cute. The wire in it kind of gives it um, some shape. And I kind of want it to look like it's over on the side since this is the back of the bunny. And this is how it turned out. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall. I think it's so cute. What do you think? So fun. Okay, up next we're gonna do a little carrot patch. <laughs> so I got this great pot at the Dollar Tree. I love that it kind of looks like textured wood, but I don't really like the color. So let's brighten that up with some ivory chalk paint um, by Waverly. And I'm only gonna paint um, the sides. So it's got this great texture. So I'm just gonna go over with one coat of that ivory chalk paint. And if I don't get full coverage, it's good because it'll just make it look distressed, which will really go with my coastal farmhouse vibe in my house. This was really easy to paint. I'm not gonna worry about the inside because you're not gonna be able to see it or the bottom. So just working around all the edges, giving a pretty good coat of that ivory chalk paint. It really brightened this pot up and it still kind of looks like wood. So I really like the finish it turned out. And it's a really nice sized pot from the Dollar Tree. Now I don't have a lot of foam that big. And so I'm gonna kind of work with what I have. So after I get this dry with my handy dandy uh, heat gun there, we're gonna go ahead and start filling this. I use one of the smaller round green ones from the Dollar Tree and then one of the white disc ones from the Dollar Tree and just kind of glue all of those together to kind of give myself a base. I wanna cover that up though so that you can't see it. So I'm gonna use some floral moss from the Dollar Tree and kind of cover all that up but not go too deep. We still have some room here to build our little carrot patch. Now I'm gonna use some of these green picks I got at the Dollar Tree. I got two packages of them. And the great part is they are just ready to go. No trimming, no cutting. You can just kind of stick them in there. They kind of have this great burn quality. And so I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna leave some space around the edges there because I wanna fill that with carrots. And so we're gonna do six around the edges like that. And then I wanna use some of these bottle brush carrots from the Dollar Tree. I think these are so cute. You get two in a package. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the little twine hangers off of them. Then I'm gonna leave the little um, raffia bows. I think they're super cute. And every, I'm gonna go ahead and alternate um, between every single one of those ferns with a little carrot. And then I got this great bunny legs to put in it. So it looks like a bunny is buried in our carrot patch from the Dollar Tree. And they're this blue gingham, which kind of inspired me for the rest of the projects today. I do a lot of blue gingham in every project. They're a little long for a bunny legs, but that's okay. And they're a little long for my pot. So what I do, they are wire that's covered in fabric. I go ahead and trim them a little shorter so that they'll fit. Um, the best way to kind of cut it was to bend it back and forth to break that wire in there and then just cut off the fabric. And we can put our little bunny legs in here and our foam kind of like in the middle part. So it looks like we have a bunny buried in our little carrot patch. Now, once I have the legs in there, I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of the greenery so I used a total of two packages. If you can't find this, you can use kind of any greenery that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I really kind of like the fern um, effect on this one, especially in combination with those bottle brush carrots. And then I'm gonna use a few more of the carrots to fill in any of the space in the center there. And then I'm gonna use some more floral moss to fill up any openings on the sides um, between the carrots and in between and give us a really full pot for our little carrot patch. 
I think this turned out so fun and it's a great way to just bring a little bit of Easter to a room that you haven't decorated for Easter. Super cute. It could even make a great centerpiece if you like. And then I wanted to decorate the pot a little bit to make it a little bit more Eastery. So I got these little felt white bunnies at the Dollar Tree. And they're super cute. They come with like um, some little felt stickers to like make cheeks and tummies. And I don't want all that. I just want just the plain white bunny. And so that is the only part I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use the whole package and kind of try to equally um, dispense these all the way around the edges. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take all these out of the packages. And they have like some writing on the back. I wish they hadn't done that because you can kind of see through it, but that's okay. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start hot gluing these to my pot. And the white kind of blends in with the pot, but it gives a little fun bunny, a little touch of Easter. And I can do one, I'm doing one like every like couple. There was, no, there was not like a way to equally distance these, but I'm trying my best to kind of just like kind of spread these out. And I'm gonna glue these all the way around the edges of our little carrot patch. If you wanted, you could just do the front if that's all you're gonna see. But depending on where I have this, I kinda want all the edges to be decorated. And I think this turned out really cute. I love the beautiful carrots and the greenery in there combined with the fun part of the little Easter bunny um, being head first in the little pot and then these sweet little bunnies all around the edges of the pot. Very Easter, but also goes along with my coastal farmhouse vibe of my house. So we got those all attached and this DIY is done. This is how it turned out. I think it's super sweet and I love it. I love the little bunny feet sticking out. So cute, what do you think? Okay, another DIY. I got this little tinsel Easter basket at the Dollar Tree and I think it's hideous. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take this thing apart. It was pretty easy to uncover the basket here. And I thought we could take this up a notch and make this a really cute wall decoration for my house. So we're gonna take all the yellow part off. I mean, what are they thinking with this yellow color? Like that's not the color of an Easter basket. <laughs> but it's gonna give me a great little Easter basket cage once I get all of this off. And then it's also got like three different color of eggs. And I'm just gonna cut and peel off the tinsel on each one of those. And I have a different idea of what I can do for the eggs. And we have a clean cage and we can get started. The bottom part of the basket doesn't really go with the shape, I don't think, of the basket. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. It's just plastic. Pretty easy to cut with some KitchenAid scissors. And I'm gonna use one of these little Easter uh, purses from the Dollar Tree. I love this fabric. It really reminds me of like a woven seagrass and it definitely looks like an Easter basket. So I'm just gonna trim off the fabric on the back side of the bag. That's gonna be plenty to cover our little Easter basket. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the handle and I'll use the top as the top part of my basket there. It's gonna give me a nice straight line from hence to go, and I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to attach it. I decide that I'm gonna go ahead and work on the eggs first. They have a little raised part in the middle that I'm gonna remove on each egg, so I kind of have just a flat border, but it's also a little bit bigger than I'd like, so I'm just gonna trim off all the plastic tabs just from around the eggs because I wanna make like a 3D egg using some foam eggs from the Dollar Tree. So once I have that all cleaned up, I have like just a border that I can glue my little foam eggs to. And I'm gonna use two of these 
because what I need is like three half eggs to kind of make it a 3D sign. So I'm just gonna use my little cutting mat here and just a serrated knife. And I'm gonna cut these little foam eggs from the Dollar Tree in half. So we can have like three little 3D eggs for our sign. I think this is gonna look really fun. You could try to cover the egg with some felt or material as well. That would also work. But I have these foam eggs, so I thought that would be a fun thing to try to do. So I'm also trimming off the bottoms, so it'll kind of go flush with the basket. And we have our little eggs ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and glue them on first with some hot glue um, before I paint them so they're not like moving all over the place when I am trying to paint them. And so I just glue around all of the edges and it worked out really well. You have to be kind of careful when you're hot gluing foam because it will melt so quickly and not too much hot glue. And we have all three of our little Easter eggs on there. I thought I would use the inspiration um, before it was like three different colors of pastel eggs. And these are the chalk paints that we're gonna use today and the colors. So we have like a light green, we have like a terracotta, terracotta pot color, and this color is Lagoon, I think, from um, Chalk Paint by Waverly. And we're gonna paint each egg a different color, just using a paintbrush. And the blue and the green go on really well. The pink I did have to go in and do two coats on but super easy to paint. And don't worry if you get any of the paint on the cage because we're gonna be recovering all of that. So I think doing the eggs first is the way to go. And I really love how these pastel colors look together. Now let's get started on the handle. I'm gonna use the existing handle of the bag to recover the handle of our basket. So I'm just gonna glue half at a time. I'm working on the outer part first. I'm gonna go ahead and leave all the tabs on there. That's gonna make it easier and just try to cover that up by overlapping the edges. And then using that all the way around, kind of cutting that to size. And that arched really well and was able to be glued down now I'm gonna go ahead and use the other handle to cover the inside of the handle here. And this one um, was kind of too strong of an arch, so I kind of had to do this one in two parts. So I glue on this half of it. And then I cut that off and then glue on the other half. It was a little bit too much of a bend on this one. And glue that down. And we have our little handle of our Easter basket. I think this looks so much more high end than the tinsel that was on there before. And now we're gonna go ahead and use this half of our little Easter bag. And we'll save the other half for another DIY later. I love these bags. I love this color. They have it also in pink and in blue. And then I'm just gonna go over and hot glue all the edges of our little Easter basket and lay this little material on top, kind of slightly overlapping the egg so it looks like the eggs are in the basket. And then um, I forgot to hit record there for a second. All I did was trim off the two sides of the basket leaving a slight overlap so you can't see any of the plastic cage or tabs. And then I'm gonna trim the bottom as well. And this little Easter basket is totally coming together. Super cute. I wanted a little bit more detail on the basket. So I'm gonna use some of this um, banner from the Dollar Tree and the little gingham bunnies. And I'm gonna use the blue and white gingham bunny to decorate the front of our basket. 
Isn't that cute? I love these. These are so cute. They come in all different colors. And you could also just use it strung together as the banner would be cute too. But I just want this little bunny rabbit. And I'm going to attach it to the front with hot glue of our basket. And then I'm going to use some of this Happy Easter ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Just going to cut off a piece and do a, just a very simple quick little bow. Just to have a little bit more decoration on our basket. And this color looks really nice with the blue and white gingham and totally matches the decor in my kitchen. So I'm just gonna trim that up and then I'm just gonna attach that to the handle of our basket, kinda like over here on the side, just to give another little fun decorative touch. And I think this Easter basket turned out really cute. To hang it, I'm just gonna cut off a piece of twine from the Dollar Tree and just tie a little loop around the top of the handle just to give me a very simple little hanger and a way to attach this to my wall. And that's all there is to it. This is how it looks in my kitchen. And I love this. I think it just turned out so sweet. I'm so glad I decided to make this. Okay, check out this cute little bunny. I just found this at the Dollar Tree and I thought it would be so cute to make a little greeter to go on the table by my front door for Easter. They had the boy and the girl, and I chose the boy one. He's in blue and little overalls, and I'm just gonna kind of make him better. So I'm just gonna take off his little brim of his hat and his hand. They came right off. The paper did kind of rip a little bit, and I was concerned about that. So I'm gonna use a little of that spray glue from the Dollar Tree and try to glue back down any paper that I lifted when I took that apart. And I love the colors, but I thought I could make him a little bit better. And my Dollar Tree just got these in. I'm like, come on, why are you guys getting in Easter decorations this close to Easter? But I'm gonna try to tone down the glitter on here. You know, I'm not a fan. So I'm gonna kind of go all over with the sanding block, kind of take off any excess glitter that I can. But also I want to rough up the paper to kind of look more distressed, more coastal, and a little scratched up, kind of working in one direction. But careful that I don't take all the paper off in the process. And I want to make just a little um, sitter to go by my front door. So I don't really need the holes in the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill those up with a little spackling. This is gonna dry white, and so it'll fill in nicely the top of our bunny ears. And we're gonna just start from the top to the bottom and try to make this little bunny even better. So I'm gonna sand off that grout once I get it dry. And then I thought I would cover the inside of the bunny ears with some burlap. So I'm gonna use some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I am just gonna go over the top of that glitter. You'll still be able to slightly see pink through the, the um, burlap, but it's gonna totally tone down the glitter effect that's going on all over the top of the ears. So I'm just gonna kind of trim it to size and then put down a thick layer of Mod Podge on the glitter and sit our burlap ribbon right on top. It was kind of curling up, so I had to kind of get thick on the Mod Podge there on the bottom. But then I'm also gonna go over the top with some more Mod Podge to glue that down. Then the other half of that ribbon is gonna be perfect for the other side here, our other little bunny ear. And again, I'm just kind of kind of laying it on there and kind of trimming it to size until it's about the same exact shape as our little pink inset of our bunny ear. And I love this project, it turned out really sweet. And it's a nice size for a Dollar Tree project for sure. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna Mod Podge over the top of this one as well and then dry those little bunny ears. I'm also gonna go over the glitter on his hand and his nose with some more Mod Podge, it's the matte Mod Podge to try to tone that down a little bit. And then I'm gonna rough up the little brim of his hat as well with my sanding block to distress it. Then I'm just gonna reattach that over the burlap there 
to seal that down and glue that back on with hot glue. Now, working my way down, I want to kind of remake his little bow tie. So I'm gonna use some of that same burlap ribbon and I'm gonna make a new little bow tie by cutting two little pieces, sitting them on top of each other and then tying them off with just some Dollar Tree twine until I have a little burlap bow tie that can cover up the bow tie that he already has on there. So I'm kind of making this bunny more three-dimensional, if you will. So I'm gonna cut off the twine and glue this on top of the little purple bow tie and give him a little burlap bow tie. Super cute, kind of even up the sides a little bit and take off any of the burlap that is fraying. Okay, so the next thing is the little pocket on the overalls. And so I'm gonna make that burlap as well. So just using that ribbon again, just kind of laying it on there and cutting out a new little pocket for our little Easter bunny. And I'm gonna glue that on with Mod Podge, kind of like I did with the ears. Then going over the top two to make sure that it is good and secure. for my little pocket of my bib overalls. Okay, for the carrot, I thought it'd be fun to do like a real like 3D carrot. So I'm gonna use just one of these um, carrots from the Dollar Tree that's covered in the orange string. It's almost the perfect size and just gonna attach that with hot glue. And then we're gonna reattach the hand of the little bunny kind of at an angle and hot glue that on so it is holding the little carrot and I think that looks way better than the little glitter carrot that was on there before and gives a little fun touch. Then he also has a little patch on his leg. So I'm just gonna use some of that burlap ribbon and Mod Podge that on as well. So basically I covered all the purple areas, the bow tie, the pocket and the patch with the burlap and that's gonna coordinate well with the little burlap ears that I gave to the bunny rabbit. And I really think I took him up a notch and made him super sweet and totally makes him go with the decor of my house. Now I thought one of these paper towel holders from the Dollar Tree would make the perfect stand. It's going to be heavy duty and strong to hold him up on my outdoor table next to my front door. And look, you can't even see it. It's like the perfect width for a hanger for the back here. So I'm just gonna use hot glue and go all the way around the edges there and then glue our little bunny sign on to that. I'm not gonna worry about painting it. I think the silver is gonna be fine for a base for outside. I think this is gonna be nice and strong and I'm also gonna do another bead of hot glue to make sure it's good and attached. I don't want him falling off. And that's all there is to this DIY. So cute. I think he's going to look so cute sitting next to my front door for Easter, waving at anybody that comes to the door. What do you think? I think he turned out really cute. Okay, we're going to do an Easter bunny gnome using one of these little Easter bunny gnomes from the Dollar Tree. But again, I want to take their idea and make it my own and improve it as I go. I think they kind of are making these for every holiday now. So if you have one left over from Easter or just a plain one, it's all gonna work. It does not have to be the Easter one that you see here. I'm gonna peel off the little white um, fuzzy fabric here that's kind of overlapping the nose and we're gonna remove all of the tinsel. I really like the nose and the beard. I think that looks high quality on here, but this tinsel has got to go. So just unwinding that all the way down. And that's gonna leave us with this great little gray um, plastic gnome hat. And I wanna cover it with burlap. This is a burlap that I get at the dollar, not the Dollar Tree, Walmart by the yard. And I'm gonna cover the gnome hat with a burlap. Now, I was gonna do one layer, but I was really concerned there's like a hole cut out above the nose there. That was gonna be kind of obvious, I thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with two um, layers of burlap so that you can't see through it as well. 
And this is the cheapest way that I found to get burlap is to buy it at Walmart by the yard. It's like $2 and something, I think, a yard. And so you get a ton of it. And I'm going to cut out two little triangle gnome hats to cover that. And then I'm just going to attach one piece of the burlap at a time just by hot gluing it to the back, kind of here around the edges so it kind of overlaps and goes over those tabs there on the side. And I'm only really going to be gluing it along the left and the right side. And I want to make this a bunny rabbit gnome. So you'll see how I um, do the ears here in just a minute. So got our first coat of the burlap on and then I'm gonna do the same thing to attach the second layer. And this really helped. You can't really see the hole through there or any of the gray plastic. And it definitely makes it look very burlap, which I love working with this burlap. It really goes with a coastal farmhouse vibe in my house. And I kind of wanted to make this one a blue and white gingham project as well. And I think that this is gonna look nice with it. I did think about using the blue baby blankets from the Dollar Tree, but I'm glad I went with the burlap. I think it looks really cute. So just trimming that up and I am going to start working on the bunny ears. I got these bunny ears headband from the Target Dollar Spot for a dollar, but they also have these at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm gonna replace the fabric, um, the yellow and white gingham, so it doesn't really matter which ones you get. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off the bunny ears from the headband. And I was like, oh, I really wish this yellow and white gingham was blue and white. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I will just make them blue and white. So I got some of this blue and white gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna replace a little yellow and white gingham that was in there just to kind of customize the bunny ears and make them match the rest of my decor. So just trimming that up. And it has like a little plastic piece in there to kind of give it structure. So I kind of have to put it back together. So I'm just going to hot glue the little um, white furry parts back down over the top of the white plastic structure that was in there before. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, trimming off all of this yellow and white gingham. And if this yellow and white gingham matches your decor or whatever is already in your bunny ears, and you could totally just leave it, but I really wanted to go with the blue and white gingham. So just putting this guy back together as well. And then we can start covering the inside of the ear with this ribbon. So I'm just gonna use uh, the existing ears as a template to cut that out of this blue and white gingham ribbon. And I hadn't used this for anything, so I was glad to have a reason to use it and I think it turned out perfect. So I'm just gonna kinda trim that up to look like the little insets of the bunny ear and to fit in there nicely on both of these. And then I am just going to glue those down inside the bunny ears, just using some hot glue around the edges and one down the middle and hot gluing that fabric on there. And that's gonna make it perfectly custom. It's gonna go with all the blue and white gingham projects that we did today for Easter. And I know it's getting a little late for Easter DIYs, but I still had some materials left and I love decorating for Easter, so I thought, why not? Let's do one more Easter DIY video. And these are our new bunny ears. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach that to our little bunny gnome with some little hot glue here at the bottom of our um, burlap hat on both sides of our little bunny ears. And then I need to kind of cover up the seam part there um, and overlap the little bunny nose. Um, I kind of destroyed the white fabric that was on there before. So I thought I would just use this white fluffy fabric that was on the headband that I took the bunny ears off of. So I'm just gonna try to cut around that and remove that fabric from the headband. You know, no materials wasted here in Craftingville. <laughs> so then I'm just gonna cut out a strip 
by cutting off all the excess stuff that's going on on this one. And we have a little strip for the brim of our hat. So I kind of want it to overlap the little gnome nose and then to seal up any rough edges here between the hat and the bunny ears and the beard. Attaching that with hot glue and then just gluing the ends down on the inside here. And that's all there is to this little Easter bunny gnome. I think it's really cute. I'm trying to bend the ears a little bit to make them stick out. And then I'm gonna use that existing hole in the top and put a simple little twine rope hanger on the top of our little Easter bunny gnome. I think he turned out really cute. What do you think? This is how he looks in my kitchen. I think he's really fun. I love a good gnome. And here is another great gnome that I found at the Dollar Tree. He's so cute. He's really a nice size for a gnome from the Dollar Tree. And he's the perfect color. He has like the blue and white striped hat and the blue body. And so he doesn't need hardly anything at all. I'm just kind of trimming up his beard a little bit. And then I thought I would decorate him a little bit, give him a few more custom touch touches. So I am gonna use some more of that um, garland from the Dollar Tree. This time I'm gonna use the Easter egg one, but I thought I would decorate his little hat first. I'm gonna use some of these white felt um, letter stickers from the Dollar Tree and just spell out a word for his hat. It has to be relatively a small word, so I thought hop would be really fun. And these are so easy to use. They have these in all different colors. I think I have white, red, and black, but white's gonna be perfect for this project. I'm just gonna peel off the back of the felt sticker and we're gonna spell out hop. And this is gonna work out perfect for a fabric little gnome hat. And just give a little special touch to the hat. And this DIY is super easy because they did such a good job on this little Easter gnome. I think he's so cute. I'm gonna cut off his tag. And then again, I'm gonna use some of this wood garland from the Dollar Tree because I really want that blue and white gingham egg. So I'm just gonna go ahead and steal that off the rope just by pulling off the staples there on the back. And I'm gonna have our little gnome hold the little Easter egg. I thought that'd be cute trying to figure out if it should go above or below the beard. I think it should go above. And so I'm just going to hot glue that on to the front of our gnome, just like that. And then I also want it to look like the little gnome is holding the Easter egg. So I'm just gonna do a dot of hot glue on each one of the little blue gnome hands and kind of just overlap the egg a little bit to make it look like the gnome is holding the Easter egg and I really think that's all he needs. He's so cute as he is, and he stands up really well like that. And there is our little bunny gnome. That's our last DIY for today. And I think he turned out really cute. What do you think? I really hope you enjoyed these Easter DIYs today. If you did, don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Happy Easter. What you do
It's what you do.